Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Trevor Cates. Welcome to the Spa Doctor Show where we talk about health tips and strategies to help you be smart, sexy, and strong. On today's show, I have as my guests Erica and Dr. Jones. They're the founders of Designer Health Centers, which has received a certification from the United Nations for its excellence in healthcare. Dr. Jones is not only a doctor, but a successful entrepreneur and owner of three different companies. He is an advisor and health performance consultant to CEOs and leading entrepreneurs around the world. Dr. Jones was once in special needs, diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. Today, you'll learn how over the course of several years, he transformed his brain and body function and received academic scholarships to become the performance doctor he is today. Erica Jones is the creator of TrueBeautyU.com, a website dedicated to natural and organic strategies for a gorgeous glowing complexion. You'll learn what led Erica to join Dr. Jones in creating designer health centers and to become dedicated to teaching health optimization tools to people around the world. I learned about these two when they were speakers on the Essential Oil Summit and then asked them to come on as a guest today. On today's show, Erica and Dr. Jones cover three steps to creating all-day energy and radiant beauty. We discuss the main underlying causes of health problems, and Erica shares some of her great tips for flawless skin. We also cover some of their favorite essential oils, so please enjoy this interview. On today's show, I have as my guests, Dr. Jones and Erica Jones. So great to have you guys on the show. Thank you so much for having us. us. Yeah. Well, so let's start off with your story. It's so fun to have two people. I don't have a a couple oftentimes that I have interviewed. Sometimes I do, but it's not very often. But I want to start with your combined stories. How did you how did you guys get to doing what you do? Well, I'll start and that kind of ties Erica's story into it. But I was struggling in high school, actually, with cognitive function decline. I had some ADHD, dyslexia issues that I was diagnosed with, and I was put into special needs to take tests. I was also really struggling with skin challenges. I had really bad acne, and I was put on Accutane, which kind of spiraled my brain (laughs) in the negative direction even further. Um, And... It wasn't until I really met a doctor actually very similar to you, Dr. Cates, who really started addressing the underlying causes of the challenges because the medical system just kept throwing medications at me um, and they were just treating the effect. And what happened was amazing. Within four months of working with this doctor, I completely transformed my function, my energy transformed. Uh, came, you know, I, was, I was also struggling with a little bit of fatigue. But beyond all that, I just started performing in school academically at a level that I was never, uh, never even thought was possible for me. So I got out of special needs. I remember walking up to the front of the class with my test in my hand and looking back at everyone else in the room. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm the first kid to finish the test today. This is so exciting because it was normally the last kid and which is why I needed that extra time. But um, within four years after that, I was so inspired to become a doctor to help other people like the way I was helped. I ended up getting an international academic scholarship to study uh, in the U.S. from Canada. And, um, you know, I went through this amazing doctorate program. I became an expert in uh, nutrigenomics and, uh, and, and really cellular detoxification um, and graduated and, and actually worked in the largest health center in America, which is actually where I was recruiting Erica to come and work with us. So. <laughs> Yeah. And actually at the time I was working in Orlando, I was working for the second largest pharmaceutical company in the world. So our worlds couldn't have been more further apart at the time. So I had graduated um, with a biology background from college. Impact and help people. But when I got into the pharmaceutical industry, I realized it was very different that um, oftentimes the goal was to keep people on medications long term as a solution and not really um, looking at lifestyle changes and how to get people healthy long term. And so that was disheartening for me because I really wanted to make an impact and change. And at the time, I wasn't living healthy myself. You know, I was 
doing a lot of processed foods, pizza runs, takeout. Um, she she did a fast. I remember she did a fast and she finished the fast. But it, was, she was, it was technically like a, a cleanse, my first cleanse. Yeah. And when she finished the cleanse, she she um, she finished the cleanse of the Pizza Hut pizza. And I was like freaking out. You know? That was just where I was at the time. I was just in that place and didn't really know um, what it really meant to live a natural, holistic lifestyle. So when we met and um, we started talking and eventually started dating, he really opened up the world for me into what true health and um, life is, is all about. And so that sparked a passion in me for health. I also saw my skin clear as a result. Back then, I was really struggling with a lot of acne and breakouts. And ever since then, life has just been different. And um, it's been so much better. I can really feel and see the health from the inside out. Yeah, it's, it was a great transformation. Yeah. That's great. That's great that you both have your individual transformations that you had, and then you're able to come together and find a way to work together. Mm-hmm. Oh, which was so cool because her brain works a little different than my brain, you know, <laughs> so she comes into the business and just took it to an entirely new level in respect to just organization, increasing the service to the people that we were working with and service. I mean, it's just, it's been so awesome working with her. Now she's launched her own brand, truebeautyu.com. And I'm just proud of her for all the things that she's done and all the transformation she's made. And now in in the lives of all these other people around the world, because we, um, we have a virtual health uh, center and it's, we, we work with people one-on-one if they're in our area, but um, you know, because this mission, as you know, Dr. Cates, it's global, you know, you, you launch your summit and you're going to continue to get your podcast out there because we know that this message needs to get out there to the world. So that's what we're committed to. That's our mission. Um, That's what we're going to, that's the impact and the legacy that we'll leave on this earth. So it's, it's exciting to be pioneering this with you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's so exciting about it is that uh, helping people realize that not only can they be symptom free and disease free, but they can have, uh, you know, super human powers like you talk about of, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, being having more better health, more energy, uh, clearer thoughts and and um, functioning than you ever thought you could have. And that's what I think is so great to, to teach people is that everybody comes from a different place. Some people are really sick and other people just don't realize what their potential is. And helping Sorry. people realize their potential is is amazing and fantastic. And that's so much of why I do the podcast and why I want to share what your message is as well it's with people. I uh, so appreciate that. And mm-hmm. on, honestly, that, that resonates with me so much because Eric and I, when we first started Designer Health Centers, 90% of the people that we worked with were, you know, very sick and suffering. Yeah, you know, they had sure. multiple chemical sensitivities or they had chronic fatigue syndrome. They had um, stage four cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's. Like we worked with some very challenging cases. Mm-hmm. And the more I started educating people like like you're talking about, the more people understood the importance of prevention. And that's when we started to see a shift from, you know, 90% of our patients being severely sick and sensitive to, I'd say around 70% of the people we work with now are like, Hey, I want to prevent this stuff. You know, I want to maximize the glow of my skin. I want to prevent cancer that my parents had or, or whatever it may be. So that's an exciting thing because when you have people coming to you with, with sure they may have some symptoms, but they don't have like full blown disease yet, but they understand that the symptoms are kind of the precursors, the oil light on the car that's telling you that there's an issue that they need to get that oil light changed before their engine blows up, you know? For sure. And I think what's so great about now, the 21st century, is that more and more people are exploring natural options, natural solutions. You've probably seen this in your practice, Dr. Cates, is that people are more open-minded to what other alternatives are out there. When I used to call on doctors um, when I was working in pharmaceuticals, a lot of the patients towards the end were starting to, you know, kind of rebel against the doctors saying, you know, I really don't want to be on this medication long term. What are my other options? 
And as medical doctors, oftentimes they weren't really trained in offering those solutions. So that's where you come in and, and we come in with designer health centers to really educate and provide that kind of opening for people that really want to, to experience health and long life and know that that's a possibility. So it's exciting right now. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And it really is about options that people have options because it's not that conventional medicine is bad. Um, right. It's it's that there's a, there's so much more that we can do than just take a take a pill. There's so much exactly. more we can do to optimize our health rather yeah. than just treat a disease. So mm -hmm. let's talk about what are some of the big things you you all think are particularly important in helping people to get to that full potential. Yeah, and and really we we see people create all day energy, and one of the biggest challenges. Uh, that that I know that you see in your practice that we see in designer health centers and a lot of the people that have skin challenges on Erica's website that 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 um, you know send in mail to her they're also dealing with fatigue and you know fatigue is kind of like that oil light on the car um, but when you start addressing these three factors um, that is really at the core of what we believe is the future of healthcare and what we've seen to transform people's lives to transform people people's complexion, their glow, their, their energy, their vitality, their ability to turn disease genes off and help promoting genes on. I mean, when you, when you address these three things, you can create all day energy and you can live your you know, life to the fullest. So um, the first one that we want to talk about is toxicities. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is one of the biggest challenges. And maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the things that you started to learn about when you first met me and the transformation in your own life that, that took place. For sure. Well, my real passion is around um, health and beauty. And I know, you know, Dr. Kate said, you know, a lot of the conventional personal care products these days have so many chemicals in them. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, what you apply to the skin can be directly absorbed into the bloodstream. And so when I started to research and learn more about health on my journey and um, natural living, I was really shocked that a lot of the products can contain carcinogens, hormone disruptors, allergens, just all kinds of just toxic chemicals that can really mm. build up and accumulate in the body over time. And we see this because we do a lot of functional lab testing with people. So, data of, okay, this person has very high levels of, of heavy metals in their system, or, um, you know, they've got just different toxicities that are going on. They're dealing with weight loss resistance. All of these things affect those factors. Yeah. And so, um, when I looked into that and even just the studies from the um, environmental working group about the body burden and how women, when they have all these it over time, get transferred to their unborn babies. I mean, it was really shocking for me. And I really made an effort to, to make these changes, not just for my own health, but for the health of my future children, because we hadn't started our family yet. So that's just one way that we're exposed to toxicities is the products that we apply every single day. And I've seen information on your site about this. I talk about this as well. It's just one of the things that we do have control over. We may not be able to control pollutants in the environment, but I can control what you know, I cleanse with and apply to my skin each day. And we've done so many toxicities tests on people. And, and the reality is environmental toxins, if you get some of these lab tests done, they typically come back the same. Everyone's elevated in, heavy, in, in uh, certain types of environmental toxins. If you're going to get one test done, highly recommend getting a heavy metals test because that can vary from individual to individual. And as we're well aware of, heavy metals can really create a lot of free radical damage and mm -hmm. uh, issues within the gut, within the body, brain, uh, with the thyroid gland and adrenal glands as well, affecting your, your energy. So, you know, when you address toxins, the, the, the easy step is to really, you know, move from, from using conventional personal care products, conventional cleaning agents to yes. more organic. But there are certain toxins that um, are hard to get out of the body that you definitely need doctor supervision for uh, that come back very elevated in most people that get tested, which is in the forms of heavy metals, like I said. Um, but, you know, I know that, Dr. Cates, you've seen some of the, the impacts that this has had. Um, and I know that your summit, you know, you interviewed so many experts about, about this, like, what is your, what have, what have you seen as kind of like the best, um, you know, transformation that you've seen in people, uh, implementing this one step? Well, I mean, there, there's so many different 
potentials for that. And it's um, um, the biggest one that I see is like you talk about with heavy metals, because a lot of the toxins that we're exposed to, our body does a really good job of just eliminating those, clearing those from the body. But with heavy metals, it, you know, we just, our body just holds on to those. And so it does, we do need some additional support using chelating agents to mm-hmm. help pull yeah. those, those heavy metals out. I would say, and that, and that's particularly a problem here in Park City, Utah, which is a, a mining town. So we've got yeah. um, arsenic and lead in the water. And, mm-hmm. and so we see higher levels of heavy metals than you might see in other places. But really, I see it even when I, in my Santa Barbara practice, um, I saw more mercury. But those those are some of the things that I see. And 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 it really affects a number of different health problems from what, what I've seen um, from, oh, yeah. from yeah. thyroid to autoimmune to um, learning disabilities to a number of different things. How about with your practice? Uh, well, just, you know, personally, I remember I was going from doctor to doctor trying to get rid of athlete's foot and some skin ex- eczema that I had on my inner thigh. That was, you know, it was, it was really challenging to get, to get rid of. I, I went from doctor to doctor over eight years trying to figure out a solution. I even went to a natural, you know, physician who I got my transformation from, uh, from an, on a neurological level where my brain started functioning at such a higher level, but I still had those skin challenges. And later on, what I learned as I started going through these advanced trainings is that I had an overgrowth of, of, of um, unhealthy bacteria in my gut. And that's our second step is that our microbiome, uh, which is the bacterial ecology and some various uh, flora and, and bacteria species within your body, how they work together and how they actually create health within your body. A lot of people don't realize these bacteria actually can hormones. Um, they can boost immune system function. Obviously, everyone knows that they're really essential operate up regulating the health of, of of nutrients into your body through digestion mm-hmm. but what i had was really challenging i only had taken antibiotics a couple times as a kid but who hasn't taken antibiotics it's it's the the things that i did probably after taking the antibiotics that really fed the unhealthy bacteria that from that day forward or from from those weeks forward i ended up developing an unhealthy um gut um, dysbiosis or imbalance with the the bacteria, and so I went to all these doctors. I did one cleanse that was a three thousand dollar candida cleanse, and it worked. <laughs> it worked, but then the candida came back like with a vengeance. Um, so it wasn't until I got rid of the environmental toxins out of my body because if you keep the toxins in your body, it it will you know, the environmental toxins the the bacteria will flourish. It wasn't until I got rid of the environmental toxins that the um, candida and all of the skin problems went away. So when you're talking about this, you have to work holistically. You have to address the microbiome. You have to at least test what's going on within the microbiome, which is another thing that we test for. Uh, and then look at the environmental toxins because they play hand in hand. And I know that you've seen that with the people that we've worked with and some oh, sure. amazing things that have taken place with some of your clients as well. For sure. The gut's just interesting in general because it, it is so tied to different aspects of health and um, well-being, even with skincare. You know, people at that often have breakouts in the forehead area. I've noticed that's often tied to gut inflammation. And um, I dealt with that years ago when I had several different persistent breakouts constantly. One of my biggest things back then was that I wasn't eating a diet that was nutrient dense. And so when I finally got that right and um, just started to rebuild with healthy probiotics and good essential fatty acids for maintaining the integrity of my um, cell structure there, I just started to see a change. So definitely the microbiome is um, so important, not just for health benefits, but for skin and beauty as well. So yeah, definitely. And, and, and Eric and I are actually getting into uh, geeking out over the microbiome and um, your overall body as well. So there's there's a lot there. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we're fortunate to have a lot of geeky friends like yourself, Dr. Cates, that <laughs> that are like really hardcore into this stuff. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, the uh, there's more, re- more and more research coming out on the, the gut microbiome as well as the skin microbiome. So it's exciting to to hear about that delicate balance of those microorganisms that 
help protect us because we've always, yeah. you know, we've been so germaphobic for so long that it's nice to have more research coming out on the benefits of some of these microorganisms and the balance that we can achieve by by making some simple changes. So, and then also you talk about micronutrient deficiencies being a, a big part of your practice as well and, and looking for that under one of those underlying causes, correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, one of the biggest problems in the 21st century is micronutrient deficiencies. The FDA has said that 90% of Americans, over 90% of Americans have micronutrient deficiencies. Um, but we know that in, in reality, uh, the soil is depleted of micronutrients from all the pesticides being sprayed. Uh, the foods that we're eating didn't have the same level of micronutrients they had just 50, 100 years ago. In fact, um, the, the World Report in 1992 came out with a with a study showing that there's a 90 percent plus uh, reduction in micronutrient content in the soil and conventional farms. But even in organic farms, it's getting concerning from crosswinds, to, you know, from pesticides and things of that nature. But when it comes down to it, it's essential to be consuming micronutrient rich foods. Yes. It's also really important to understand the foods that deplete the body of micronutrients or um, some things that might inhibit the body from being able to upregulate nutrients. Um, if you're eating too much spinach or too much kale or too much, um, you know, too much of the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower without steaming them, the enzyme inhibitors in there can block the ability to upregulate the micronutrients in the body optimally. I don't, I'm not saying you should never eat um, you know, broccoli raw, you definitely should. And, and all these other things you should be eating raw. But if you overdo it, uh, it can be a challenge. But, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, uh, that, 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 um, that, it, you know, we've been looking at is medications create micronutrient deficiencies. I mean, heart disease medications, bl blood pressure lowering medications, cholesterol lowering medications create uh, deficiencies in coenzyme Q10. And if you have a deficiency in coenzyme Q10, it puts you at a greater risk of developing a heart attack, you know? So there's some interesting things there like serotonin reuptake inhibitors, uh, you know, they create deficiencies in B vitamins, which then will, will create, you know, more depression or anxiety. So you have to be careful. And, um, I look at the medical system as an incredible system for emergency care, but when you're relying on medications for long-term um, recovery of, of, of lifestyle issues that you've had, uh, micronutrient deficiencies, toxicities, et cetera, it can get, it can get very dangerous, I would say. Um, but you know, this, mm -hmm. is, this, is, this is a big thing, micronutrients for sure. And, yeah, and I think that, oh, go ahead. Uh, with, I was just going to say with medications, I, I, when people are watching this, I don't want people to just stop taking their medications. Oh, right. no, yeah, yeah, people, yeah, exactly. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, for people to talk to their doctor about Absolutely. these medications. And, yeah. But, but being aware that these can cause micronutrient deficiencies, like some of the things that you mentioned, um, and, and just knowing that if you can't go off these medications, that doing, you know, taking the supplements to help your body, support your mm -hmm. body, is is great to do. Um, you know, if you can get off the medications, there are mm -hmm. so there oftentimes there are better alternatives, but the combination approach also works. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and definitely don't go cold turkey off any meds. I made the mistake with my mom when I first started learning about serotonin reuptake inhibitors. <laughs> And it was not good. Yeah. <laughs> like sure, it was like firecrackers going off in her brain, and she did not respond very well. Um, you know, to the point where she literally was, you know, c you know, considering some things that I uh, obviously would not want her to be considering. So, yeah, you you definitely need to be working with your doctor, and um, and definitely a combination approach while you transition your lifestyle and and implement a lot of these awesome strategies is obviously best, the most ideal way to, way to address it. And yeah, having and a naturopathic doctor or functional medicine doctors, you know, is a great way to do that. I yeah. wanted to mm -hmm. go back to the vegetables though, because I know that the people watching, listening are thinking vegetables, I'm not supposed to eat vegetables or I'm not supposed to eat raw right. vegetables. So, and I know you said, don't stop eating them. So let's talk more about the balance how yeah. much how much of the raw vegetables how much of the, how much do you steam vegetables how many mm. vegetables should people be getting because we know that cruciferous vegetables and spinach and kale those those are great 
foods for us, but what what is the the limit on that? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question, and honestly, the 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 best the best um, answer for that is is essentially just a serving of 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 the type of vegetables that I was just talking about that have high levels of enzyme inhibitors in them. If you have a serving a day of them being raw, which is like a cup or so of of raw, you know, vegetables, that's that's completely fine. But in when you're when you're steaming them, you're not nuking the vegetables like you know, some people, maybe your grandmother, you'd go over to her house and you'd get some broccoli and you'd pick it up with a fork and it would like fall off your fork. It was so, you know, we're talking like El Dante steamed, um, you know, where it's still relatively firm, but you're kind of breaking down those enzy- enzymes and you're still getting 90% of the micronutrient content of the of the actual vegetable. Um, but it's, again, it's very limited amount of vegetables that you need to be even considering this with. Um, you're looking at broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. Um, you're looking at um, a red cabbage, white cabbage, um, spinach, and then kale. Those are the, those are the top, uh, top ones uh, to, to consider sauteing uh, and, and also consider, um, you know, just st- steaming al dente style while you're um, consuming a, a really healthy micronutrient rich diet. So um, that's, 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 I'd say the best answer for that. Great. And Erica does a great job with our, we have a son, she does such a good job with, with just making him just such incredible foods. So, and she does, she follows a lot of this. So yeah. Erica, what are some of your tips to make these foods taste good? Because <laughs> some people just don't like the taste of them. Great question. And she's a Southern girl, right? So yeah, I totally understand that the taste of vegetables sometimes just, you know, you can't get past. One of the things I do is I make smoothies. So I think smoothies are a great way to get um, greens in. I know you mentioned not having too many raw greens, but you know, I will throw in a handful of spinach into my morning smoothie. I think that's fine. I don't have um, an issue with digesting it. And um, that's a good way for me to get those great nutrients in. So I've, yeah. I've done that before. Um, I do little sautés, kind of Asian inspired sautés. I think those are great ways to get greens in as well. Um, I also have a recipe for kale with balsamic vinegar. So I'll saute some onions down and cook that kale down with the balsamic vinegar. It's just absolutely delicious. So I think um, using a lot of seasonings and spices to bring out the flavors of the the greens is a great way to to add them into your diet and then serve Mm. them with some really um, tasty proteins like salmon or prepare chicken your favorite way. There's a lot of great creative things that you can do to, to make it taste good. Yeah. And, and honestly, Erica's food is unbelievable. Like she, she has done over 300 plus recipes, um, over the last, you know, few years where she's put it up on her website, truebeautyu.com. And, um, my, my health participants, the people that I work with, I call my patients health participants cause they're participating in their health. Um, you know, they, they've really enjoyed a lot of the the foods that she's had. But, I, you know, from my perspective, I think the oils that she uses, the fats that she puts in the food are like a major key to like making them taste delicious. Then the spices, like t- talk about the Indian spices that you love because a lot of people don't know about this. And it just it just is so delicious when you start experimenting with these spices. Well, I think cumin is a great one. Um, I use a lot of cumin, um, oregano. I use turmeric. The curcumin and turmeric is a great um, health and um, beauty booster. So I use that a lot. We use sea salt sometimes, you know, just to add flavor. Sometimes people are so like afraid of salt from what we've been told, but we use um, pink Himalayan sea salt. There's um, minerals in there. There's health benefits to that. So we season with that as well. Um, Gosh, I use such a variety. I don't want to overwhelm people, but I'd say curcumin, uh, not curcumin, but cumin, turmeric, and um, oregano, sea salt are probably my go-tos. So, And some of my favorites that she uses is cardamom. I love it when you use cardamom in, in some of the dishes. And, um, you know, I, I, I just... I think that it's important also to to be consuming some of these spices like raw. Like if you are to be getting like turmeric, you can actually get turmeric root. And what I did for my shake this morning is I put in um, some protein powder. I put in some uh, berries. Then I put in a, um, a little thumb-sized piece of ginger uh, and a thumb-sized piece of turmeric root. And 
I think there is a, a half a squeezed lemon and something else in there, but um, you know, add a little bit of water or almond milk or hemp milk and blend that up. And it's like delicious, unbelievable. Oh yeah. I put in uh, a little grass fed butter, uh, as well as some coconut oil for, for the fat. So it was like a, a very comprehensive, uh, shake slash meal. <laughs> that sounds great. And you can get the, uh, turmeric and it looks kind of like ginger root, right? You yeah. can yes. get that at sometimes grocery stores have them, but Asian markets also mm-hmm. have those, correct? Yeah. And it looks yeah. very much tiny. like ginger root. But if you look at it carefully, you see that yellow orange, that bright yellow color on the inside. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. it. That's exactly it. And Great. and if if you're using garlic, one thing that I recommend is um, you know, breaking the gar or, or crushing the garlic up and just exposing that to air because the allicillin, um, the active form of the garlic that really has a lot of the health benefits in order to activate it in a way that will benefit the body the most. Um, it needs to be exposed to the air for like around five minutes. So what I typically do is I'll crush the garlic, expose it to the air, then I'll put it into whatever I'm wanting to put it into. Great. That's a great tip. Okay. And Erica, you have some skin tips to share with us too, right? Sure. Yeah. I'll definitely share some skin tips with you. Um, I can, I'll kind of tie them back into the the three different things we talked about earlier. Um, So with toxicities, my first recommendation is in terms of choosing natural, organic skincare products and solutions. Back when I started with, um, you know, getting my life in order with my health, there weren't very many options in terms of what you could choose from and what worked. But now there's so many different companies that have great products. There's so many different options that you can try. I really think now is a great time to start moving in that direction if you're someone that um, wants to. And I think we should be moving towards more natural solutions. So that's the first thing I recommend, um, just minimizing those toxicities, tying back into that. The second is to support your your gut microbiome as best you can. And so the was I cut the anti or excuse me, the inflammatory foods out of my diet. So I was heavily on processed foods, fast food, takeout, all of that. I started slow with just making meals a few days a week in my home. That's what I could just handle and deal with at the time. But I made baby steps and progressed to where I just started eating more um, nutrient dense whole foods and meals that I made myself at home. So that's a great thing that people can do if they want to see skin results, because that's going to support and help your gut microbiome, which is directly tied to our complexion as well. So I definitely recommend that. And thirdly, um, for micronutrient um, optimization, definitely making sure you have a diet that's rich in healthy whole foods. That's important. And, um, you know, choosing organic whenever possible is is super important as well. And uh, just a couple of other tips that I recommend drinking half your body weight and ounces of water per day. I do that. Um, a little um, essential oil in the water. I use ginger in my in my water every now and then. Just a few drops. I do probably one drop per eight ounces. Um, ginger is great for helping to maintain the integrity of the gut and feeding those healthy bacteria. So um, that's a great essential oil to use. But I don't want to overwhelm folks, so I'll just leave it to those few simple tips. But those are great things to get started with if you're looking for optimizing health as well as your skin. And great. what I will what I will say is that I. I had no idea how amazing facials were, um, like <laughs> like emotionally. Like I, I've had a massage and you feel incredible after a massage. And I'm I'm a guy, so I'm like I'm not doing facials. You know, I'm like that's not not who I am. That's not. I what made I'm him do one. <laughs> So, yeah. I'm like, you need to do a facial. <laughs> so she made me do a facial and it was just um amazing. Like it like the the five step facials that that Erica walks people through are like like they are transformative. Like I felt like an entirely new human being after my facial and it was bigger impact than if I had like an hour long massage or something like that as far as just the stress release, the way my my skin felt afterwards. Um, just, it was, it was euphoric and I, I'm actually afterwards, I was looking forward to doing, you know, more facials and then she, one <laughs> <Got> time, <hooked. laughs> yeah, this is so funny. And one time uh, I was, I was, she did a facial. I'm like, Hey, I want to do a facial. So I started doing a facial and then she's like, Hey, we have to go. She's like, we, you, you can't, you know, you, we, we've got to really head out now. And I'm like, well, I'm like, I need to finish this facial. I was like, seriously upset. Like, <laughs> I wanted to finish my facial because of how good it made me feel, you know? So um, it, it's something that I think is really 
you know, important. And, um, you know, I, I, I had no idea the impact that it would have on my skin, but the way it made me feel was so outstanding. And so it's an opportunity to slow down in our busy lives. I think just taking care of ourselves and, um, Maybe that's some of what you felt. That's what I feel when I just take some time to just pamper myself a little bit. So I think we could all use a little bit more of that. Yeah. Yeah, And we certainly can incorporate that into our skincare routine is to mm-hmm. have have the opportunity to enjoy it and enjoy a little bit of that pampering. So Erica, do you do um, do it yourself recipes for facials? Is that one of the things that you do also? Yeah, I do um, at home kind of, you know, do it yourself recipes. You know, I typically start with oil cleansing. I use hemp oil because my skin is really oily and I need a very non commodogenic oil. Um, So I do that. Um, I follow up with just kind of cleansing that off. I do a facial steam with um, ginger or not ginger, geranium essential oil. So that essential oil helps to bring out radiance and a glow to the skin. So I do that. And then um, I follow up with a mask that removes toxins. I just use um, bentonite clay and apple cider vinegar. And for some people that may be a little bit harsh, but my skin is very oily, especially in the summer. So I need something to suck out those impurities and the oil from my skin. So that's really helpful. And then I just follow it up with a moisturizer that um, I really love and use. And it's really simple, but it's relaxing and something that I do regularly. Yeah, when you put the clay mask on, it like kind of dries and you feel your skin like it's going to it's sucking into the center of your face. It feels really <laughs> weird. But if you wait like 15 minutes and then you take it off, you're like, oh, my gosh, this feels so good. You know, so for somebody that is new to facials, like I just started them like half a year ago. Um, it's like one of the most exciting things that I think I've <laughs> discovered over the last year. I'm like a chick, you know, I'm like, I'm going to get my nails done. No, No. I'm not. I'm not. (laughs) But (laughs) but I am with the uh, the facials. I think they're great. So but you know what? It's okay. More men are starting to get pedicures, manicures, facials. That is true. They're spending they're going to the spa more than they used to. And that's okay. I mean, there's as you found, there is some some beautiful benefit in that, not only in your appearance, but just the relaxation benefits of it as well. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. And Dr. Kate's work cited um, because I know that you've been interviewing experts for years and you've obviously been in this game for a long time and um, you're going to be coming out with your skincare product, I know, you know, and your, awesome. your skincare line pretty soon. So I'm excited. We're about that. really excited about that. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait to, to launch that. So excited. And, you know, because I, I definitely completely agree with you that we, we need to be using more natural, more organic skincare products. And there are some out there and there are some great ones out there. But I feel like there's still room for another one. <laughs> another <Awesome>. one. <laughs> well, we can't wait to try it. We know it's going to be amazing. Yeah. But, and before we go, I know that you guys were just recently in the, on the Essential Oil Summit. So, And you've mentioned a couple of essential oils. You mentioned ginger to add to water to drink. And you mentioned geranium mm-hmm. to use topically. Can you just mention a, a few others that, that are your favorite essential oils? For sure. I just, um, just this morning... I don't know if you are you familiar with oil pulling. I'm sure you've heard of it. Yeah. So I was oil yes. pulling. For those that don't know what it is, um, oil pulling is a way to. It's an oral health benefit. It's also a health overall health benefit as well. But what you basically do is you take a um, spoonful of coconut oil. I add oregano essential oil to it. Um, a few, I usually do two to three drops of it. And um, you put the oil and the essential oil in your mouth and you swish it around. And I do that for about 20 minutes. And what it does is it pulls toxins. Um, People say it can pull toxins from various regions of the body, but it definitely pulls bacteria and toxins out of your mouth. And I've noticed for me that um, my teeth feel cleaner each time I do it. It feels like I went to the dentist. Um, Your breath stays fresher longer. And you can almost feel um, the bacteria just kind of I don't know if dying is the right word, but I feel like my mouth feels fresher after I do it. So I use essential oil for that. Um, We diffuse essential oils a lot. So my little boy is a toddler. Our little boy is a toddler. And 
one of the things that they deal with oftentimes, you know, once they get to the stage of touching everything, putting everything in their mouth, um, we don't use hand sanitizer and all that. But what I do use to boost his immunity is I use Roman chamomile essential oil. So I will diffuse that into his room when he's taking a nap or just for a couple of hours when he's sleeping at night. And that mist, you know, he inhales it, it goes into his lungs, that boosts his immunity. So those are a couple that we use. Yeah, like I mean, citrus bliss for mosquitoes and stuff. Yeah, well, I for some reason when I go outside, Erica never gets bit by mosquitoes, but I'll get bit. So it's so frustrating. I'll have like welts all over my body. So um, when I when I use the citrus essential oils, I mean, it really repels all of the mosquitoes away, and I can you know end up with clear clear legs afterwards, <laughs> which is nice. Um, but I like you know just just yesterday. I never really get headaches um, at all. I just, you know, pushed myself quite a bit this week and I was was um, not getting as much sleep as I normally do. And then yesterday I just felt like a little numbness in my head. It felt kind of weird. And so, um, you know, typically never get that ever. And uh, Eric is like, well, try um, inhaling some lavender. Uh, and so I put that in my hands and I took 10 deep breaths with the lavender up against my nose and literally went away. And I think that's because of the increase in oxygenation and the effect that it has with the vasodilation within the body and the brain, which can increase the, um, uh, the ability for oxygen delivery to your frontal cortex. And I just felt like just this numbness kind of dissipate afterwards. It was really, really powerful. But I think there's, there's a lot of really good oils. I know frankincense is a good oil for the, for the skin. And, um, even though it's a little bit more expensive, um, and I, I really, I, I love just, just a, a lot of different types of, of blends of oils, but Erica has been delving so deep into it over the last several months. And it's really great. The benefits um, I'm benefiting greatly from her knowledge and wisdom. And I think you're doing a webinar series on this soon, aren't you? Yeah, over the summer I will be. It'll be a free series for people that would just want to learn more about practical ways to use the oils. Because when I first started, it was so overwhelming because there's so much online. And um, I just wanted to make it simple, simple ways people could learn to use them. And I just wanted to say one more thing um, about the oregano and the coconut oil. So if you're just new to starting with oil pulling or you're wanting to try this, just add one drop of the oregano because it's so strong. I've been doing this for a while. I can handle two to three. Just start with one drop and mix it in. So I don't want anyone's mouth on fire and people upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause that's, you said, seemed kind of strong, but yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and essential oils, like just so you know, are like nothing to mess around with. They're they're very potent. Um, you have to be, you know, you have to be somewhat knowledgeable in using them. Um, and you know, just just to give you a funny story of just how powerful they are. Um, when Eric and I, Erica just delivered Isaac, and I'm like wanting to get all creative with some of these essential oils. So I was thinking so that helpful. it would be great to throw some. Um, you know, some, some, some sort of essential oil, like, like lavender or, or, um, geranium or something along those lines into the, the actual filter of the air purification system that we have in our room. So, you know, I, it was late at night. I get this idea, all the lights are off and I accidentally grabbed oregano, not not lavender. And I put a, oregano inside of the filter and I just dumped like a ton of oregano in the filter and it like dispersed throughout the room and poor little Izzy, you know, Isaac, my, my son was like coughing. We're like, what's going on? Erica wakes up. Both of our eyes are like watering. You know, it was crazy. So like, if you don't think that they're powerful, you got to think again, you have to be careful with essential oils and, and just, you know, be, be sure that you know what you're doing with them. <laughs> Absolutely. A little bit goes a long way with essential oils and yeah, just a drop or two can be plenty for, for a lot of people. And then mm. also the purity aspect of it is really important to making sure you get the highest quality you can find because yes. A lot of them are diluted down and not mm -hmm. very pure. So, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Well, thank you so much for your information. How can people find you all? What is the best way to, to, for people to, to reach out or to, to follow you? 
Sure. My website is truebeautyu.com. I'm always giving away great things. Um, you can find me there. So I've got um, information on essential oils. How do, I, how do I use them for radiant skin? I've got a free download on my site right now. So if people want to download that, they can. And I've also got a little cheat sheet for um, for radiant skin, my 10 little strategies that I, I love and use. So that's available. Yeah. And um, if they're interested in getting any of these lab tests done, like the micronutrient tests, or they're wanting to look at their microbiome or their heavy metals levels, they can go to designerhealthcenters.com. It's designer, like designer clothing, designer health centers, spelled with an ERS.com for all you Aussies and Canadians listening um, <laughs> that spell it uh, R-E-S. Uh, so E-R-S, spelled the American way. And, um, and then if you're interested in really learning how to upgrade to high performance, I have a podcast. You can go to iTunes and download that at Superhuman. Uh, so if you just check out Superhuman Entrepreneur on iTunes, you can uh, get access to some of the business experts and high performance experts that I interview. Great. Excellent. All right. Thanks again, you too. Thanks, Dr. Cates. Thanks, Dr. Cates. I hope you enjoyed this interview today with Erica and Dr. Jones. To learn more about these two, you can visit my website, drtrevorcates.com. Go to the podcast page with their interview, and you'll find all the information and links there. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the Spa Doctor podcast on iTunes or on my website so you don't miss any of our upcoming shows. And if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend that you get your customized skin profile at theskinquiz.com based upon your answers to this short quiz. It will give you great tips for glowing skin and vibrant health. You can simply type in the skinquiz.com in your browser and in just a few minutes you'll have your own customized skin report. Also don't miss any of our latest tips to get glowing skin from the inside and out. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter and join the conversation. Thank you and we'll see you next time. 